do what we're about to hear from in the presentation from Roby, who was who is an alumnus of this master's degree, as is Cheeto, and next week you will be hearing from another alumnus with Nawang. And they face this problem. How am I going to use the knowledge of my master's degree? And Nawang, Cheeto, and Roby all applied it in what I would have viewed as an almost impossible situation. Roby had a wicked problem for how to mobilize the bottom up in Haiti when he didn't have the normal supports of government. But he had the social supports of the historic Haitian traditions and cultures and values. And he utilized those in an extraordinary way. And Cheeto, of course, had that with the whole challenge of advancing the status and the opportunities for women in Zimbabwe, where she had a unhelpful both religious and governmental enabling support structure to, to advance the status of women. And she took it all the way to the parliament. And you will be hearing next week how Nawang did that in the context of the Communist Party of China in a region of China that they had militarily occupied, which was Tibet. What I'm saying here is that any one of you can learn from the examples that have been set by people in this MA program who walked before you in the learning journey. And so it is with great pride, and I say pride because one of the fun things about being a professor is to see one's students doing something that the professor absolutely could not have done. And what Roby did in Haiti just amazes me because the United Nations, with all of its resources and people, could not do what Roby has done, and he did not do it alone. He used the values of Haiti, and he used the colleagues of people who at times were literally fighting against each other and hurting each other, and he gathered them into partnership. So it is with huge admiration and pride that I turn this class over to Roby, and Roby, I hope you will permit anybody who has questions to raise their hand during your presentation and ask you questions, because no doubt you will be telling us about things that are almost impossible to believe. So with con great congratulations, um, I want to turn over to Roby, but let me just say that when Roby was, before he went into the master's program and through the master's program, one of my personal joys was to watch Roby fall in love and get married to a fellow master's student, and sadly, she's no longer with us. Because one, one year ago, she died of a very tragic cancer. But Roby, I'm remembering beloved Sabina, and this is the anniversary of her passing. So my compassion and heartfelt recognition to you. One of your colleagues, you had many. So Roby, thank you for joining our class this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Papa Zo, uh, Daniel. So if you had Papa Zo, I say Papa Zo, you might not know this is a new name for you, a new nickname for Daniel. But Daniel has this name, um, Pine. I'm sure the internet connection will come back on for Roby, but right now um, there's some difficulties with the, the connection from Haiti. So everybody be patient, please. Roby's logging back in, um, and so he will join us in just a minute.
the history while Roby's logging in of colonialism in Haiti is extraordinary. I mean, it has been a colony of the United States for quite some and many uh, half a oh, century basically now. But uh, for those of you who don't know, it was the first successful slave rebellion in the in the world where the slaves took over the government of their country. And so the rising up of the people of Haiti goes back a long way. And that energy was central to what um, we're hearing now from Roby. And so, Roby, you're back on. And thank you for your insistence. This is a common thing that we all over the world we share, which is how to log in and out <laughs> and use the Internet, especially for those of us who live and work in marginalized areas of the world. Um, so, Jean-Pierre, are you not hearing me? Are other people hearing me? Is my audio functioning? It says it is. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can okay. hear you very well, Daniel. Okay, I we're waiting for Roby to come back. Yeah, we're waiting for Roby to come back in. And we all understand the situations and the challenges of, of the internet. What's remarkable is the fact, how many countries do we have here? One, two, six, six countries in very difficult parts of the world, and we're all together in one place. <laughs> no, seven countries. Yeah. He was on and then he fell away. Has anybody in this class been to Haiti? Uh, put your hand up if you if you've been there. Um, it's uh, I'm just it's interesting to me, especially people from the United States have often gone down there on mission work, um, and so some of you may have been there and seen seen the situation. Um, it's. A country and that has functioned essentially without a government. It's been run by um, dictators or warlords or whatever you might want to call it for a hundred years since their successful slave rebellion that brought them independence from France. Well, uh, I want to, th well, Roby's trying to log back in. Um, have any of you had concerns about lab number 11 as we get ready for tomorrow? Do you all understand the assignment of finding, um, oh, Roby's messaging me. I think level 11 is uh, straightforward, Daniel. That's why maybe people are quiet. It's okay. Straightforward. Yeah. Uh, and Logie, Roby's trying to log in again. Yeah, it's okay. it's straightforward, but um, I think one of the challenges that I'm trying to highlight to everybody is that the um, you need, through this assignment, to find out who your partners are going to be and who can most advance your... Uh, your agenda. And so um, bring forward a couple options and let's plan directly because you have to figure out where you're going. And so um, that's the challenge. And Roby, you are back on. So yes. welcome. we all understand the internet challenges. And I have good, I have good um, connect, internet connection. I don't know what happened. Maybe everyone else on um, using the the university email and I'm not, that might be a security reason, but let's see. 
let's so, go forward. Thank you, Obi. Yeah. So um, thank you, Daniel. I heard you were giving a um, story about Haiti. Um, yeah, Haiti, for the background, I will go quick on this story. So Haiti is formed by a people coming from Africa, mostly a West Africa, all over Africa. Um, so the Tokos in Haiti has poured in the Tokos on the um, Africa has poured people. They brought us to the Caribbean nations and has slave. So Haiti has to fight for its independence against the, you know, colonialism, France, England at this time. Um, in 1804, we become the first black um, nations ever free. And we didn't stay there. We say that we, we have to help the rest of the nations to free from the slavery. And, you know, slavery was the main economic market for for the all the rich country at this time so for them it was like a, a it was like a very bad thing that Haiti took Haiti took independence and the first Haiti paid um, actually in we took our independence in 18 of 1804 and in 1825 the first Haiti to pay its independence I'm talking about French nation and since that Haiti Haiti took like 50 years to pay to pay its independence back. So since that this country is fell on on crisis, multiple crises, and that's why I think many many of you my my head about Haiti has a country who are facing a lot of challenging in terms of politic, economic, but in the meantime Haiti. Haiti is a very proud nation, and we are very proud of what we did in our story, because none um, not supposed to be in slavery, and Haiti give the turn, and then we are we are we are keep paying for what we did in the past, but we won't just put that on the on the, the slave master. We as a nation, we have our own responsibility in what we are dealing with today. Of course, where Haiti is placed, you know about the big earthquake. We hit Haiti, which hit Haiti back 2010. More than 300,000 people were killed by this earthquake. And, and we had a lot of coup d'etat, who where our presidents, many of them get assassinated. The most recent, recent one was in 21, the Jovenel Moise get assassinated while he was in power. And since that, we doesn't have a president, it's political crisis. And now the gang, we 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 have um, gang who control about 80% of our capital, which is Port-au-Prince. Um, so, and Cité Soleil, where, I, where I'm from, is one of the, of the, place in in port au prince which has a lot of gang activity gang violence between between the between in between the gang in this area so that's mean haiti is a, a very challenging place but in the meantime haiti has a lot to has a lot to teach because we've been to, to a lot at some point they call us the country of NGOs, the NGOs country, because they, you know, this is a place where people come to do like experimentation all the time. So that is why I think um, today we are in context of, of talking about the impact and how to scale impact. Because one thing that we learn um, with future generations is everywhere there is success. Everywhere there is success. Now, how to identify these these successes and to to scale them? But because they are exist everywhere. So let's back to the beginning. So Daniel, after the earthquake, so if we the world like the humanitarian world want to come to Haiti actually to save Haiti for Haitian, and they come with money with resources. And I remember the story 
Daniel came down with just his backpack. I'm talking about 14 years ago. And he said, I know we will find what can help Haiti in Haiti. So that's this line keep me forever. And when we met Daniel, Daniel came down to Cité Soleil, Cité Soleil, which is a place in Haiti. If you are going there, you and will, 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 you know, we have to have the big tech with police and armies to go there with you. And Daniel came down as normal people and met people and it start asking questions about what is working in your community. So this is how the journey start for us. And then that was empower us to really not focus on the problem that we, we were living, but to look what is working in our community, which is the first principle in seed scale, start from success. So identify the success and start from it. So, okay, let me move this. So you might not you might not be able to see this picture, but it's a it's a I have this this is a picture of myself in te, 30 years ago, 13 years ago. So this is when I received the the email from future generations that I am accepted in the program. So I have to give a, a, a background of myself. As I say, I was grew up in Cité Soleil. I went to, I went to school to. I finished my high school. I was preparing myself to go to, um, what we call, traditional university. But before that, when I was in high school, I was accepted in a state program to study, um, community um, management. That equivalent with a with a um high um equivalent with the uh, higher program. So, but I was still preparing myself to get to, 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 to go to like formal university in Haiti and the earthquake hit. Um, so the thing now what to do, because we have thousands of people in the street of Port-au-Prince and we have people coming from everywhere come to support and we, we are there. So the question we had in mind, if people can come from everywhere in the world to support, we can, we are the one who's supposed to stand to support our community. Um, this is when I was able to work with IOM, the International Organization for Migration. And to I spent a couple months there to really help to gather data from the community because it was like a shame to see, you know, people who doesn't know community come to get data in our community and the data they are not they are not they are not good data because they don't care about what you're dealing that's that's mean the local people they are the one actually who's supposed to to do the work and that's why we started the the movement that we call combit soleil at this time so combit um, by definition is a um, is the traditional way how haitian use us and still uh, working together but mostly in the agriculture area so our focus has we were living in the city in a ghetto what we call a slum so how we can actually take the idea of combi the principle of combi to bring it in the in the um, um, cities so we didn't have tools for that so we, we know we have to do something, but we didn't have tools for that. And when we met to Fiji Generation, we get to the program, and then we find out exact how to, how to identify the resources in our own communities, how to live, to study with your own communities. And this is when my journey started with Fiji Generations and started to see my community, Cité Soleil, my Haiti, with a different high, because before that, we only see Haiti as a very vulnerable country, sitting, waiting for the outsiders to come to change Haiti for us. But one thing that teach, uh, Sid Scale teaches us is, you know, you are, you are the leader for your community. And I remember the day when Daniel came down, we were in a community space in Port-au-Prince named Haiti Communitaire. 
And Daniel, look at me in my eyes and say, you, you should stand. You have what you want to help your community. And then I apply to the program and I get accepted. And the picture I just show you, this is when my empowerment started. This is where I feel that I am a leader in my community. And what my wife, the picture and the little sentence up there, my wife said, oh, go be get accepted. He go in to study community development to help his community. That was a responsibility. That was like, okay, I'm faced to my duty and I have to respond for that. So we get to the program. The program actually, as you already know, I think this is the first thing that you learn in the program is, you know, identify the success, partnerships, evidence-based and behavior change. For me, these four principles, they are like dating for us to start. The first thing is to identify what working in our community. As we said before, people see our community as poorest place and controlled by gang. People will never think about what is working in our community. And I remember when, we, when I took the first class and when we back to our community, the first thing that we do is a mapping. Mapping success, what we call a success mapping go to the community by community, started with the mapping of the human resources, because we have to prove, as we're talking about evidence, we have to have numbers to show that everybody in my in city Soleil, they are not gang. Everybody not gang. They are good people, professor, teacher, pastors, voodoo priests, they all there, but there's no one really talk about them. So these are the first thing that we did. And then one thing that we learn is, partnership, two-way partnership. So Sitzkel, one thing that Sitzkel taught us is you come, the community, this, this, this should be in the driver's seat, but they are not the only one who will participate to change the community. We have to be aware of other power, like the government, like other organizations, like, like the NGOs, the 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 schools the churches so we start to learn that and learn about the power in our community and then how to build partnership i think many of community leaders why they are not succeed it's this is where they fell they fell in in not building the right way the good partnership in their community within their community Sometimes they are looking only outside to build partnership, but they are not building partnership between the sectors in a community. And then one thing that I want to I want to talk about the community. Community in a community, there are many communities. As leader in your community, one thing that you have to do first is to study your community. Study your, because the community, they are so complex. As we say, they are, they are community and they are communities in community. That mean like the churches, they are part of a community, religious community. The school, they are part of a community. We are talking about the gang. They are a community in the community. So how to work with all these groups to put them together to define like a, a common goal for the community. And what are the common goal? What do we need to live in our community? We need peace, we need education, we need clean water. These are like the element that everybody needs to live. So why not we can work around these goals for our community? Um, <clears throat> the personnel, my personal journey with um, Sitzkel, I think, Sitzkel helped me find my mission. And I don't even call it mission because when it's mission, you can actually, you can tune out to a mission. It was a mission yesterday, but now today it's another thing. I call it duty, <clears throat> responsibility. So if you went to a community, you owe something back. You owe your community, you owe your country. Um, 
this is why we we have family. We have people who are helping us grow to become who we are today. So I find this and it stuck with me. So since I started, so it is something that the traditional, I will say traditional um, academic system won't give you. One thing we are killing our community because I, I know many or some of you coming from Nepal, Kenya, and Ethiopia, US, you are in this call and I know about you know your journey, your work, your focus. All of us dealing with our own problem in our community. But now it's how you you identify your vision. If you don't have your if you don't have a vision, so how you will you will be you will stay stand, how you will keep moving because you know there are so many challenges out there. There are so many problems out there. A vision is something when you close your eyes and then you can dream of it. You can see it and you feel you feel like this is where we want to go. This is who we want, we want to be. This is where we want to be. So we need a vision and the vision will sit with you, with your community, and that will keep you. As I was talking about traditional um, academic system, so they are killing the small nation, the traditional academic system. As you know, the, all the big universities, all the big names, what they do, they are stealing our people in our community. Because when they take you, when you go out to study, so you have go, I don't, I don't have the data in mind, but in each 10 people who left a community to go in a, another country to study, seven of them won't be back in their community. And it's not their fault. It's the system trained them to, to leave the camp, to leave the ghetto, to leave, you know, to leave your family, to leave poverty. <laughs> so they don't train us to change poverty. They don't train us to change community, but they train us to leave community. So that's why a country like Haiti, there is what we call the Buen, the Buen Juan. Almost all of our, of our good people, educate people, they are living abroad. So how you can change a, a community if you don't have skilled people? And then one thing that I think future generations help us is stay in your community while you are studying, while you are looking for tools to help you change your community. So that was really something that stuck with us because still Haiti is very challenging but my connection to Haiti. So my family live in the US. I have two daughters. Daniel just talked about my wife who just passed away about close to two years ago. Um, but I have to be in Haiti if we are the months. Why? It's only because what connect me to this country, it's how I was trained. Just I just imagine if I came, I studied for four years, five years here in the US, how hard it will be to back to my community and to readapt to my community. I think this is something since um, Future Generation put out there, the, the alternative how to help build leader and stay in their own community and to apply what they learn in their life in their community. So this is something very, you know, very personal. And then I think many of you will, will experience this. And that doesn't mean to stay in your community and never go out. So you have to take out, they will talk, teach you about take out of the box. So after the first thing I remember we learn is how to you know map our community, study our community. And they didn't say that you will have everything you need in your community. They didn't say that. They say that try to know first what you have and then look where you can find other challenge, other resources that you lack in your community. And this is why I think this program, the first place I went was in, in India. And one thing that I remember is I was shocked because in my mind, before I went to this program, Haiti is the only country who's dealing with this kind of problem. But I, when I went to India, I visited like the, the slum of Mumbai. I say, we are not alone. We are not alone. What we need, we need our people. 
And then there is something in common that we can learn from other nations and to change our community. So here I'm talking about the residentials, how important they are, how important they are because you as a leader, you need some time to be outside of your community and to think, to learn from other culture. And I remember the time that we, we spent in, in Kibera, in Kenya. I met the map Kibera Ken because I was doing like cartography in Fiji in IOM in Haiti. So these people, I met how they are using mapping to help the institution who came to Kibera. So so it's like it's like we are not alone. We can keep moving. I remember the time that we spent with um, people in Molo in, you know, so I find my woods again. I find like so it's like energy um, um all is that not only what we learn from professor it's what we learn in the communities that we visited and one thing that i think daniel talked a lot about that daniel said you know the classroom they are like dialogue space for you for all of you the real teacher they are in your community and they are in the communities that you are going to visit it. So ask them questions because they are the one who are, who are living the life. They are the one who can will teach you real thing. We are just there to give you method. And this is what is his skill is. His skill is like that's what something that I like about it. You can use it. Any groups who has this, who have a, a methodology, they can use seed scale too. Because seed scale is more than a, a methodology, it's a framework that you can adapt to any kind of methodology that you have. It's like something that you might have a methodology and you miss something and seed scale will fit it there to you. So that was very, um, this picture was in Haiti. That's Daniel, you can see the young Daniel, <laughs> young myself also, and Otak um, from Afghanistan and Eric from Burundi. That was in Haiti. Um, um, and then after two is, what we were able to learn, and Daniel was my practicum advisor. And one thing that I didn't, I didn't tell you, even now you can see my English is not, it's not good. It's not perfect, so I can communicate, but it's not perfect. But ten years ago, I I didn't have any English. I remember the challenge that I have in the classroom, and I remember the method that Fitchgen put in place to make me in the environment environment where I can learn exactly everybody's learning in the class. So my my past wife, Sabina, was in the class. Daniel was in Mikey, which is um, Mikey, my professors. They said, OK, Sabina, Luino, and Willio, and Savila will sit close to people who speak Creole, and they will translate for them. And then let's get to the practicum. When I get to the, that was the most challenging thing that I have uh, had to, to write something, to develop a project. And you know what? Daniel gave me an advice. I, he, might, he might forget about what he told me. He said, you know, you, you are working, we are, you are going to design something for your community. So why you care about English? Why you care about like grammatical yet? Yeah, they are important, but they are not the most important. The most important is what idea, what are you going to create for your community? And I remember he said, take your computer, open a folder and inside each folder. So I was going to write about combit. He said, okay, put a list of people that you wanna meet, put a list of places you wanna visit it put a list of every resources that you have to, you want to read. And this is how you start your practicum. And, and then say, do it in your own language, do it in English and, and do it in Creole. And then English is a tool. Someone else will help translate what you, what you write. And this is how I, I made it guys. It was, it was, it was very, very difficult in the beginning. And future generation make it possible for me because what was most important, it's not the how well I speak English, but it's how well I want to help my community in Haiti. 
So that was the graduations. And after we graduated from that, we that was we were about three. Savila, Jacques, myself, and my wife, she was living in Haiti at this time when she was alive. We funded future generations in Haiti. Why we funded future generations in Haiti? It's exactly going to scale. It's exactly how to scale our impact. So we saw what we can do in Cité Soleil with what we learned. We say, how now we can actually spread what we learn all over Haiti? So that's why we started Future Generation Haiti. And we started what we call a success mapping to map communities all over Haiti. Not only communities, the success community. And we put our method to say how we define a success community, a successful community. And then we, we build a map with over hundreds of community and all over Haiti. And people were like shocked to see what kind of work people are doing in the mountains, in the village, in the ghettos in Haiti, because no one really focus about what is working in Haiti. People mostly focus about what not working in Haiti. So that was really a big success because we were able to gather this data and put it out for free. Other institutions use it and then they, 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 they work with other communities. And then we continue with the Combit, Combit Soleil Levé movement, the foundation of Combit Soleil Levé. And this Cité Soleil, which was, and today, which is, this is something that we have to learn about change. Change is not like one line straight. Okay, change is, um, Daniel, I'm sorry. Daniel is raising his hand. Yes, um, Roby, you're using the word combit. You have not defined combit yet. Maybe that's coming, but I think everybody would like to know what is this magic? Is it voodoo? <laughs> um, so thank, thank you for that, Daniel. Um, yeah, so I use combit. I, I tell I say a little bit about combit, but I will I will come back to it. So when we have seed scale, but seed scale, of course, seed scale is this is not a cruel name. This is not a Haitian method. So one thing that seed scale will help you how to find your own seed scale <laughs> in your community. So seed scale is a tool to help you navigate to find your own method in your community because each community has the own way of solidarity of working together. For us in Haiti, it's combit. Combit is a traditional way of how Haitian work in solidarity for a common goal. And this is what we've been studying for the last 12 years. And now when we start the movement is to empower the community, study the combit and then find like the principle, the values, and um, the step behind combit. And with Fiji Nation Haiti now, one thing that we are doing, we are writing a guide, a guide of community development based in practical and principle of combit. So we've been doing that for the last four years. And we have one chapter now ready, almost ready to set out. And this is exact. I will be back again today, how to scale the impact. When you find a seed, the seed is, you're taking care of the seed, but the seed now is not, is not enough yet. You have to put it in good soil and then to grow the seed, to find more seeds and then to, to find good weasel. And this is where we are. We find the seed, our seed scale help us find the seed, which is the combit in Haiti. And now we spent the last 10 years developing combit in the context of Cité Soleil. And now we are developing combit in the context of Haiti. We are creating, we are elaborating a guide now so to, to, to have something that Haitian create, Haitian built, because the country of Haiti has been leading with all the method coming from outside. So when it's coming from outside, it doesn't aware about our culture, our language, they don't know how our stories. It's, it was just because someone was, something was working in Kenya. Oh, they are black. Maybe we'll work in Haiti. Something was working in, 
in the black community in, um, in America, they want to try it because they are black, but this is not the way that like, the development work. So I say, as I said, is the the development is not a, a straight line. There is going down, is it low and, and, and high, low and high. So when we started to with Combit, so we take Cité Soleil in a level that where the citizen of this whole community at this time were able to decide the future. We launched a community project in Cité Soleil with the people, led by the people, where we, we put together about, about um, 6,000 people, put their resources, their goods, goods is our currency, to build a public library, one of the biggest public library in Haiti. And we are using the combit method with seed scale where the people themselves, they are putting their resources together to do it. And now, as I said, after 10 years of practicing learning combit in Cité Soleil, and then communities all over Haiti come, they want to learn what is combit. This is why we're in the process to, to elaborate. We are elaborating a guide named the the guide of community development based on practical and principle of combit and now the group combit now you see because the movement is getting is getting wide all over haiti so the name of combit solar elevation in group combit because there are many groups all over haiti now who are practicing the method of 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 combit so i talk about the success mapping and 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 seed scale how seed scale help us do that and how we spread our work all over with the success mapping with the methodology of seed scale and now expanding all over Haiti. So I talk about the definition of combit and one thing that seed scale helping us, the process was seed scale helping us revitalizing the combit because combit was already there, but not many people were practicing combit because of the new, I will say, I will say um, system coming all over they did it like now, so we are we are readapting Combit. We are building a new generations of leader to see how Haitian can lead their destiny, take their responsibility to lead their destiny. And I already talk about the 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 the, the guides, and then the tools that we are using to work with the community, and then the plan that we are working on how to to really use the impact the immediate impact and to scale all over the country. And in the meantime, there is some projects going on. As we say, we talk about the seed. So this is a cruel name, Cimen Cimas Combit for Pou Changement Social. It's like the seed, seed the seed of Combit for the social change. So one thing that we put in place now is to, we have like a big national a competition we put out. Everybody all over there in Haiti can apply. And every month we choose, we have a list of projects. The one who closest to the methodology of Combit, we support it and we train them. We give them tools to do that. So we every month we give about $1,500. So you have you might have a question to say, where they find this money? Let's back to the to the building partnership. How much time you spend to build partnership? There was, I remember Daniel was the one who did the fundraising course for us. And one thing Daniel was telling us about the fundraising, don't focus on money. <laughs> don't focus on money, focus in building relationship because relationship, they are the one who will come later with resources. And with that, with group Combit, we are able to convince, not convince to bring the partner, the Vito foundations, Roots of development, they come, they, they allow us, give us some support. Now we can do this, this project and helping with the guide. Of course, Future Generation Haiti, and we have the Flora Foundation, which is a long-term partner that Future Generation helping us find. And they've been with us for more than eight years now and supporting this work to develop the, the combi. So I know you might have a lot of questions for me because your question might bring more because I just share a little bit. So to conclude is seed scale help change life and community. So your personal life will change after this course. After you finish that, you have to see the first impact in yourself. You will see it. 
and then your community. So don't 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 be in a worry. I remember when Daniel told me, you know, you know, when you're coming from like in a poor place like Cité Soleil, the first thing in your mind is how to get by, how to find a job. <laughs> Daniel say, job will follow you if you skills, if you do your work good. And today I can tell you, job is following me. I have my own objective. We build something very, very um, original and people respect it. They, they've been inviting us like all of it. Like last, last month I was in, I was in, in the Congress in, in Washington, DC. They invited us to talk about, the, about community development work because they want USID to change its method. And, they, and this, is, this is how it is. When you spend time to learn, to practice, and to follow advice, and you know, big entity, big agency will look in for your advice. So this is the work and I will say thank you very much for the invitation, Daniel. I am so, so happy to share with you. Um, so thank you, thank you. And I will happy, I will be very happy to answer questions because as I say, I know I don't, I'm not covering um, anything. And Daniel, you can lead some question too for some specific thing that you know you want me to talk about. Thank you. All of us, Roby, <laughs> congratulate you and applaud. And it is, folks, it has been, a, you can imagine how exciting it has been for me to be a partner with Roby and Future Generations Haiti. It has inspired me, and I hope the same. Um, will for me, just this brief one hour presentation. So, Roby, again, it's an honor to be your colleague, and it's very proud to see the achievements. Um, can you talk just briefly, uh, while other people are assembling their questions and comments, Roby, how do you translate and use the idea of human energy, which is cooperation, commitment, compassion, combeat, all these things, how do you show to donors who you want to give you money, okay, the donor is a specific role, and how do you show your strength and prove your capacity when you are focused on a very specific thing, which is needing some money? So how do you make that argument? Uh, of they, my, they could easily say, Roby, Combeat is working. It's fantastic. You don't need my help. Good luck. God bless you. Goodbye. How do you make the argument of asking for money? Um, so first thing, everyone, all the donors, they want their money to do good thing. That's the first thing. They want their money to do good thing. And no donor wants to start anything on their own. Like you go without nothing and you say, we need money. They don't like that. So first thing that NC scale will, will, taught you, will teach you is the first resources is human energy. And this is why SISCAL tell you that there is resources everywhere. Everywhere there is human being, there is resources. It's now how you use these resources. So any project that we are doing, the first thing we do, we put our skin first, the community skin first in the game. So we start in the community, and after that, we're looking for, not, we, are, we are not even looking for, we invited people to come to participate in the success with us. We inviting you because anyway we are moving forward, and we inv we we make like invitation to participate. So to answer straight to your question is never go to a donor without nothing. Never go to a donor without nothing. Design your plan, and you will find good and um, successful stories. There is something that we put in 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 seed scale. I will try to make it quick because it's so important. There is two communities because we made like the seeds, Creole seed scale lesson for communities in Haiti. There is 
two people coming from in one, one community, they, they come to ask money for the same project. One come, it was a school. They said, you know, we live in the mountain. We doesn't have anything. Children doesn't go to school. We want to build benches in the community to, for a school. Can you please help us and God will bless you. This is the first person. The second one come to say we live in the mountain. It's a very beautiful place. We have a lot of trees and we are happy up there. So we have people, we have carpenter in our community. We know how we can build benches. So the only thing that we left, it's money to buy tools to make our benches. So these are like the same community and two way of asking for support. And the donors go to the other one because the other one already, they are very proud of the community. They already identify the resources in the community. And then, you know, they are looking for like the last kilometers as we call it in Seedscape. So this is my advice for you. Never go to a donor without with your hands, like black, black hands. <laughs> okay, well, John has asked the question, Moby, and I wanted to, okay, he, so he's first in line with his question. And uh, John, if you want to ask it, it, it's in the chat room, but um, you, you asked about challenges. So do you want to ask that directly to Roby, John? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the nice presentations. I really uh, admire your presentations and the work that you are doing in ET. So uh, uh, my question is, uh, is what are the challenges that you might uh, face when you were starting your project in ET? Because you might have some of the challenges that you might uh, uh, encounter, you see. And so what are those? How did you overcome them? Because you know it is good to know sometime uh, the result, the resilience that you have uh, overcome. So when you start your your project, so and then lastly, I like uh, the point that you have put it out that uh, many of the graduate don't don't return to the to the community after they have graduated. Really, it is something that it is happening, and uh, that our communities are not growing because once you get a scholarship, you graduated from there. You don't want you don't want to come back to your community again, so that is really uh, something that have touched me, and it is something that have inspired me because you know, uh, graduated from the university, it's good that you come back to the community, build your community, uh, pay you have to you have to you have to maybe uh, give back what you have learned from uh, the society that you have went to learn the the experience and also the, the knowledge that you have learned from that university. But most, at most, many people don't come back to the communities. Mm -hmm. So a future generation is doing that, is building the, leader, the leaders within the communities. They are uh, applying the skill within the communities. So it is really something very good. So, but I would like to know some of the challenges, some of the complex challenges that you have encountered when you started your, your journey in ET and how did you overcome those challenges? Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Thank you for your question. It's it is a good question because when people giving story, they like to they like to only give what you know what's excited <laughs> people that I like to to talk about the challenges. But they are a lot. They are a lot, and they are more than than the what make you excited. Know how how you you overcome them. So it's depend to them. The first thing. The first challenging you will meet is you and your community. They are the first one <laughs> because they what you're going to 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 bring or to learn from them to make them understand they are they are they will resist. They won't trust you that they are their own success for their community. They will fight against you because they will only take, no, we need government and the NGOs to come to do for us. What you're telling us now about ourselves, we, we are too weak to change our community. Do, that's, that will be the first resist, resistance. And even yourself, sometimes you will doubt yourself. <laughs> you will doubt yourself in the process to say, am I white? So these are like the, the main challenge that you will meet in your community. And the second thing will be, your local authorities or the government, because they have a plan, they have the way that they work. 
some sometimes they are too dependent and then when you are in the community now you are trying to empower people to believe in their own energy so they they will they will try to fight you back and we will be back again in your building relationship so there is three way partnership which is the community the government the upside down and you have to as a leader to find a way how to make these three groups we call them three three works fireworks because people cook with three works and put the pan so you you need each of them just imagine you are cooking with a big pan and then one work is is too weak or too small we need three works in the same high and the reason we have to this much poverty we have more than i don't know 7 billion people living in poverty in the world it's only because the works which is the community it's weak and the other two works which is the government and the and the outsiders they make it weaker than they empower this work our work is to make the community strong ready to work with other stakeholders so to your question will be like the community will be one of the challenge that we will meet because the, the the behavior change which is one of the principles that you see in its scale that will take time this is not today and tomorrow it will take time so i'm talking to you about like 50 almost close to 15 years experience in city soleil but we're still facing this where people don't believe in themselves they don't believe in themselves they don't they, they they don't see what is working in their community they just want to sit and wait for others to come to change um, their life for them so yeah i will stop here but of course there are a lot of challenges many 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 thank you, thank Obi. you so you much know, thank the, the cheeto you had uh, i think you had a question you wanted to comment as as a expert practitioner in seed scale Okay. Uh, hello, Lorobi. How are you? Good. Nice Let's to see you. Nice <laughs> to see you, Lorobi, after a long time. Long time. Anyway, thank you for the presentation. I was uh, I was thrilled by the way you you explained to the class and how you took the impact to scale and especially uh, on uh, highlighting to the class that. Of course, we have a community, but it is it is a complex community. We have communities within communities. That is very that is very important. And the way you highlighted the difference between our own university, FGU, with these other conventional universities. That's the, I mean the framework that we are using, seed scale. It is very important. And uh, the way we are saying, the way you say it. We have successes in every community. You then highlighted when you say you don't go to don donors empty-handed. And the fact that we already have successes in our communities, it means we already have something. So I'm sure the class is taking note of all that. And uh, uh, I'm also happy to share, to, to maybe to buttress the fact that our communities are the universities. Yeah. I mean, that was very important. Uh, and see, our graduation, it doesn't mean we have, I have to go and look for a job in Europe or somewhere else, but I have to, because it's something I've learned from that university. I know the complexity of that community. So it is very, it becomes easy to use seed scale in a community that I already know. That's all, all I wanted to say. Thank you, Robi, for that. Maybe let me give time to our students so that they also chip in and see, seek clarity from you if whenever if ever they want to seek clarity. But otherwise, I'm happy to see you, Robi. Thank you, Sida. <laughs> Other members of the class have comments, questions to follow up. But I hope you're noticing the happy alumni association that when you go through and finish your master's degree, you have colleagues. Cheeto and Roby were in different years, <laughs> but they're part of the same colleagues supporting each other. It's it's you get a sense of what's going to happen for you 
in in one year's time when you complete your degree. You're welcome to the future.org. You leave future.edu and you become part of future.org, the world network. But uh, uh, comments from everybody, uh, questions. Bill, you have a comment here in the chat room. Do you want to elaborate on it? Sure. Uh, thank you for your insp inspiration. Uh, here in Appal Appalachia, where I'm from, it's a mountainous region. I don't know how much you know about it, but uh, we have a, a history of over-dependence of the government uh, through things like the war on poverty uh, and similar movements. And then the government comes in and controls the project. Uh, how do you fight back against letting that that control? Yeah, so <laughs> I, I remember when I we went to West Virginia and we took a couple of trip um, um, to, you know, when they are showing America in TV, in the movies, they only show the big cities, the New York cities and big cities, Hollywood, but actually America um, facing its own challenging. One place that we are visiting during my class was uh, Detroit. Detroit was a place in America where they used to have a lot of big factories. Big factories, everybody in the city was working in factories and people forget like how to work somehow helps people forget how to gardening so and then there was like a big crisis i think in the 50s and all the money guns and they left people without a job so this is something that we learned in the when we went there so now people there what left is only people because money is gone so how now when you are trying to create your own change in a system like US, which is very structured system, very controlling. So <laughs> the freedom that we have in Haiti or some of us have in Africa to, you know, to bring initiative to start our, in the US, even to start your own fire in your backyard, <laughs> you need an authorization for that. To go, you know, to go to fish, you need an authorization for that. So that's mean they we are facing will challenge when the government system is not working well. So that's mean never let the government to control all your life. The people, they should be ready anytime to, you know, to, to face, they have to stay together. We, we went to a program in Canada, in Cody Institute, Daniel know about Cody Institute. One thing that someone gave us a story there's people who live in one building, like, like 15 families. They live in one building. No one knows others' name. No one knows others' name because everything is functioning. There's water, there's electricity. There's someone come, they say it's not normal. You are living in one place. You are over 15 family. No one knows each other. So one thing that someone did, it kept the water. <laughs> no one has water. There is a problem now. And people came out to say, do you have water? Do you have water? Do you have water? <laughs> and they keep, they start talking about, they start talking about the challenge that they have. And they decided to, okay, we doesn't have water. How are we going to fix it? Sometimes a problem, you have to use it as an opportunity to build community. So I will say to these questions, build the people surround, strength, strengthen the people more and more to face these don't let don't let your whole life to the government. We need them, and we have to know we are the boss. And sometimes the government think they are they are people's boss, but we are the boss. They are working for us. But to know that you have to come together, and this is the the, the biggest problem we have in Haiti. Everybody wants to work in the government because they think when they are going to work in this is this is the power they're going to have, and it should be the inverse. N versus people has the power and they decide who going to, to work for them. So my advice for, for your case is build community.
build community, make community stronger and stronger. And you will find your power to talk to the to the big power. Thank you. Um, to follow up, thank you, Roby. Um, and are there questions uh, about any more questions or comments from the class? We're nearing the end of time, but we do have some more time. And Chido was yeah, mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, please. Mm -hmm. Um, Daniel, can I come in just one minute? Of course, of course, please. Okay. Uh, I wanted to, you know, I, I was uh, touched by Robbie when he said, you know, when I started this program, I didn't, I couldn't speak English and I wanted to relate to Mulongo. I thought, I, I hope Mulongo was listening and he, uh, that he's not the only one with this kind of, uh, in this kind of, but here we are with Robbie. He's now, we are actually learning from him, but he's one person who is saying I English challenges. So just, I just wanted to remind Mulongo that you are not alone in all this. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs>